All right, let's start. It's pretty dense, so um, let's start now. Um, so my name is Eric Oresti. I'm the CEO of StreamData.io. Uh, just want to talk a little bit about me. So I started to code on the web 25 years ago. Um, B2B, Google for France, and then um, I implemented a driver for 384 kilobit per second over the internet. yoo -hoo! Amazing. Um, and then I went into uh, financial technologies, uh, was a high frequency trading architect in New York, um, and I helped people make money uh, by being faster than others. And now I'm a repentant uh, high, high frequency trading uh, guy. So the way I see the web now is pretty much the same as um, a city, uh, the city of Paris. Um, for those who know it, this is a, a service mesh. Um, so the web to me is, is uh, a, f uh, a population of services that interconnect and exchange events. This is the subject of this presentation. I'm going to just present a little bit what we do at Stream Data, uh, because I may use some of those terms. Um, so if we follow the north-south, east-west uh, convention that I like, uh, what we do is to help people uh, consume APIs and turn those APIs into events when they, when they consume them with our distribute product. We help people discover third-party APIs with our discover service. Within uh, the product itself, we have a journey service, which, is, um, which are workshops for uh, large accounts. And then we, for API products, we help companies turn their API or augment their API with an event-driven API. Uh, with our distribute product, and we help them being discovered. That's, that's what we do. All right, why event-driven APIs? Um, so what are the business drivers? Uh, first thing that uh, you can think of is uh, the, in the financial industry, real time is real money. Uh, latency is very important when you trade. If you happen to shave 10 milliseconds for an average broker, you actually uh, can make $8 million a year additional. So that's significant real money. Um, and we see this kind of uh, return as well. Now on the retail banking side, if you're a large bank, so I took the largest, ICBC, um, 10 milliseconds on their UX would bring them $1 billion. Allo, allo. Non, c'est revenu. Ah, bizarre, hein? Ouais. Bizarre. Anyway. Because um, any time you can find 10 milliseconds in an application that is used by consumers, you can actually grow your business by 10%, which is something that's documented. Real time is real money, as well in retail. Any time you can uh, uh, show your store online uh, faster, you make more money. That's a study from Amazon that I recommend for those who will see the, the slides. So that's on what's visible of Amazon. Uh, now, what is less visible of Amazon is what's going on in their warehouses, whereby um, their plant, their, in, their work is mainly to ship um, the packages as fast as possible. Anytime they can win a second, they win $50 million a year. So, and that's just based on uh, taking their revenue and taking a second out of it. So you can imagine that anything that we can bring to the system, either within Amazon or with their partners, is something that will generate money. So we're not talking about elegance of um, an architectural design. It is about bringing efficiency when it comes to exchanging data with um, a money value uh, with others. So that's what drove the um, events in, uh, in the first place. So what happens if you want to implement uh, a fast connection 
with your partners so that your partners can partners and clients can actually see your data in real time. If you don't do anything, what they're going to do is to pull your API. And they will take a snapshot of your API, and then uh, they will compute the differential and make, some, make something out of it. So your API ends up being pulled very regularly by your VIP customers. It costs a lot. It can crash your API, as it happened to Twitter in 2013. Uh, it's extremely expensive from a Allo, ça revient. It's back. Um, as well as from a CPU perspective. So this is what we can call polling madness for some sort of data that is uh, refreshing very frequently and that some of your partners and clients are actually using. So if you don't do anything, this is what's going to happen to your API, polling madness. And a good way to know whether you, ne you need streaming is to actually look at your traffic today and find whether you have some VIP customers that give you some money, but uh, also cost you quite a lot of money uh, because of these uh, API calls. W who in this room knows its cost of API calls per million hits? It's an important number to know. Uh, typically between five cents and 50 cents a million. Uh, it's a good metric to know so that you can uh, actually know what's going to be your pricing for your API. Just to say that if you start realizing that some of your customers are costing you more than they bring you, uh, it's, po it's probably because there are intense customers pulling your API very regularly. So what's the solution? Events, um, and that's our specialty, a stream data. What you do is, rather than having the client be pulling you every second to get an update, you provide them with a streaming API that is uh, running besides your regular API, leveraging all the security of your API, and uh, feeding your customers with data that they need so that you can unload your regular API and give them an unlimited access to your, to your data. All right, some vocabulary. Um, we had an async API session this morning. Who was in the async API session? All right, so for those who are not there, um, just a, a few things on uh, the difference uh, between uh, REST and, uh, and the uh, events architecture. And they are complementary. It's not one that will replace the other. We will always need to have request response, uh, but we also need to, um, to feed our clients with, uh, with data. So REST is stateless by design, and by definition of REST, uh, by fielding, it's stateless, whereas event architectures are stateful. It's based on connections, persistent con connections. In, uh, in the REST world, you talk about resources, uh, whereas the, the in the, in the events world you talk about events, you do not care much about URL. The, the what what matters is a topic. So a, a topic is something that people may be interested in or not. If they're interested in them, they will uh, subscribe to the topic and receive some events. So it's a slightly different world, uh, but it's uh, quite different. In terms of what you do with the data, uh, typically you, you do actions uh, based on uh, REST calls, whereas in, with events, you react to events. You take an event, you react to the event, which is your doing of, of, uh, of that information, and then you typically generate other events. Uh, in terms of business, the uh, API metrics for pricing is typically the number of API calls that uh, is included in your uh, pricing package in a million of hits, so you're yeah, all uh, familiar with that. In terms of events and streams, uh, what matters is the intensity of the stream, which can be uh, assessed by the number of meaningful items that are being uh, streams, streamed per second to a consumer. That's your cost driver and typically your pricing driver. All right. 
So, uh, just to make sure everybody understands the event logic. Uh, wait. Yeah. So, when Paris, food. Um, that's a demo we created with XY. So, we're going to see what, what happens when a uh, a uh, guy in a restaurant uh, is placing an order for fulfilling his, uh, his, uh, his own orders. Uh, this, the order is submitted by an API, uh, by the website client to the API. Then the order is submitted. There is a response. The restaurant will receive the order. So all these are events. All right. The supplier with, will uh, request payment for his order. He needs the money against the, uh, the order. And then you know, we're again in a loop of, um, of, uh, of events between the, uh, the restaurant and the bank. Same thing. You request it. That's an event. Got a response. And the supplier will uh, trigger uh, an event when he gets the payment. This means that he can do something now. So it's explained like this. It's really simple. And it's actually really simple. It's just a different way of looking at things and looking at how we interact between the different players in a logistic chain. All right. So account validation, payment is initiated. And then uh, for those who follow PSD2, uh, we go into RTP, we send it to the core, and then we have a payment request that triggers an event that you can see. Uh, so the, for example, the Axway choreography engine would take events, uh, create reactions out of it, and publish new events. So that's why I'm quoting it here. And you validate the account, and that's it. So that's what we're talking about. Not that difficult. All right, now I'm trying to get back. Woohoo. Oh, and uh, on the right, this is a um, Axway choreography uh, interface. You actually define the reactions based on uh, JSON file. Whoa. Um, this one. All right. I don't know what happened. It's all right. Bug. Okay. Now, in terms of protocols, it's really easy to get lost with protocols in uh, even driven APIs, but uh, it's good to have a, an idea of what they are for and who they are and what, how they interact. We can go into the details of each of them uh, at our booth. Um, AMQP is a great protocol for consuming data from a third-party cache. Uh, Kafka, everybody knows uh, Kafka as a message bus. So Kafka will internally uh, help you manage your streams and help you manage your data as uh, upstream as possible and then uh, create actions on this, uh, on this data as a stream. The, when it comes to APIs, uh, Kafka is not meant to be a protocol over the web. The only protocol over the web is HTTP. <laughs> WebSocket is also a, a web protocol, but it's directly based on TCP. Uh, so whenever you have a request response on the one side and a feed on the other side, you would need to have a protocol upgrade from one to the other, which could break some uh, security chain. And uh, with HTTP2, with HTTP2 uh, you have streams, infinite streams available, so that you can actually rely on HTTP now for streaming data to, um, to a client. And uh, the protocol we recommend is server sent event. Who knows server, server sent event? Wow, that's way better than two years ago. Um, so it's a, it's a protocol that's unidirectional and meant to be uh, to help you keep using HTTP 
whenever you want to feed your audience with, uh, with data. Webhook is another event-driven uh, protocol that's quite interesting whenever the, the, the events for a specific consumer are scarce. If you have a, once in a while an event, then the Webhook will uh, notify the app and the, uh, the consumer will then fetch the data. It doesn't scale well when you get into the millions or billions of events um, a day. So that's when you, you start needing some, um, some uh, streaming. All right, so this is uh, some vocabulary. All right, so we, we looked at the business drivers for streaming. Now let's look at some uh, trends uh, which are as uh, important as the business drivers themselves because they support them. Uh, first thing is uh, reactive front ends. So front ends now, uh, for yeah, most of them, would, who's not using a reactive framework today? Who is not? Oh, all right, let's do it the other way because that could be a bit shameful. Uh, who's using a reactive framework today? Yeah, all right. So a reactive framework by design means that it's reacting to events. There is a, a bus with uh, that's called observables sometimes and the UI will actually fetch the events in in the bus and present them to the UI that's uh, that's already even driven another trend is in the languages themselves uh, for example in our case we moved from Java to RX Java to uh, to get into the streaming world most uh, big languages are doing the same right now um, Who's using a reactive language today? All right, getting there, getting there. No GS. Yeah. Um, another tech driver is on the the way we use data. We used to play with tables, and now we with um, uh, events and streams. We play with uh, streams. And actually, there is a, a bijectional a correspondence between a stream and a table. Uh, let's never forget that. But it's easier when you're uh, working in terms of uh, events to work in terms of streams by design. And there is a correspondence between the changes on the table and um, a stream of events that you can send. So a great example for that is Kafka, whereby you would send uh, a feed of uh, events with a with a stream. Uh, it's uh, highly scalable, uh, lovely, and uh, we love it. We consume Kafka, we feed Kafka. Uh, it's not the only one, but it's a pretty damn good technology. A uh, last one that's well less well known is uh, streaming artificial intelligence. Um, so what, what is meant by streaming AI is when the model that you use for computing uh, or making decisions on, the, on behalf of uh, humans, when the model itself updates itself for each event. So the model starts in a certain state and then it will take uh, events from, uh, from, the, from the world, make predictions, and compute the difference between those predictions and what it had predicted, and it will update itself for each event. So it's a streaming AI. The, uh, the other name is Massive Online Analysis, and that's the most scalable way of um, uh, putting together AI uh, in real time based on events. Anybody has um, streaming AI in place today? In the room? Not yet, yeah. So two years from now. <laughs> Another driver that actually just validates the uh, async uh, pattern is uh, what's been uh, offered with uh, Kubernetes and Service Mesh. Uh, in, in Kubernetes, you, um, everything is based on uh, the, the, the Kube uh, API, that is request response, but also async. Uh, so that the east-west traffic in in that pattern now is uh, is already is ready for talking synchronously or asynchronously, so that more and more people will uh, see in effect in their in the, in their own information system the benefits of uh, being able to talk sync and async. So that's great because that 
should help a lot of uh, backend developers or backend teams uh, come up with a roadmap that should help the API developers. That's my hope. Another trend I wanted to mention, it's not there yet, but uh, it's coming. Um, it's uh, based on the only industry so far that has mandated the adoption of APIs, which is the banking industry in Europe, uh, with uh, PSD2, which is a, a subset of what banks can expose as APIs. If you, if you compute the number of uh, polling that should happen when PSD2 and instant payment are in place amongst the entire industry in Europe, you come up with numbers uh, that are similar to a financial market. So there is a, probably a trend that will come based on regulation as well for the adoption of streaming data to, uh, to third parties, including between banks between themselves or banks to aggregators or banks to wealth managers and robo-advisors. So it's uh, so much of a trend that there is a market definition by Gartner. I don't know if Paolo is here. But uh, I know they've been following the event-driven uh, infrastructure for a while, and they, they actually came up with a with a paper on it. And their prediction is that uh, within two years now, half of the APIs should also provide uh, an event-driven version of their uh, data. So I'm typically not using Gartner for predictions. Uh, I shouldn't say that. But on this one, uh, we we do support that that uh, that analysis, and actually we have tried to um, measure uh, whether the prediction is going well or not. So I'll talk about that later. Examples. So that's the uh, as a company we created a product called Discover that we've applied to the web. Uh, we can surface topics and uh, events from any API. So we feed the thing with, uh, with a URL, and it spits uh, uh, some data about how dynamic is the data, whether it's even driven or not, and all this automatically. And at this stage, for what we've done, we could find 150 organizations with uh, streaming APIs out of the 20,000 from Probable Web. That's way less that than 50%. Uh, now, all the 20,000 declared on Probable Web may not be uh, live enough to, uh, to, to measure how many, uh, what's the percentage of uh, even driven APIs. So I encourage you to, uh, to play with our gallery. It's, um, it's on the web. So on that basis, we came up with uh, quite a few interesting names, which is uh, something I wanted to, to share today, because it shows you uh, patterns or models that you may want to follow when you're going to uh, work on, on your uh, event-driven APIs. Um, so I'm starting with Salesforce. Uh, so Salesforce on the API land is uh, huge. Uh, at least half of their business is based on API, so I'm talking uh, 4 billion. Um, they have been into event-driven APIs and streaming APIs for a while. They even created a language to uh, filter uh, data. It's called a, uh, SOQL or SOQL. I don't know you say that. So SOQL. Um, they, and they rely on uh, Comet D uh, with WebSocket. Another one is Twitter, uh, with uh, not only the firewalls, but, uh, but actually the, uh, the streaming API. And on this, you can, uh, you can actually uh, filter based on phrases, based on user IDs, uh, location, based on the bounding box that you can define to uh, define your own stream of data that you will get from uh, Twitter. And it's free until uh, a few thousand uh, items. A third one is Xignite, which is a market data vendor. It's like uh, Reuters or Bloomberg in the cloud. Uh, who, who knows Xignite? All right. So uh, they're pretty well known in the capital markets and investment. Um, what, they, what they've released is an, uh, an API that uh, allows for people to consume their data as an HTTP over SSE stream, or SSE over HTTP stream. Uh, their volume is huge. They just went above 1 trillion API calls a year, and it works pretty well. 
Another one is Slack, uh, which is based on the uh, WebSocket with uh, tons of different event types for their uh, real-time messaging. Zendesk. And then five more. OK, so just five minutes left. Uh, demonstration of uh, what, uh, how it looks like in, uh, in Xignite. So this is the Xignite developer portal. You, you actually, the experience you have is uh, very similar to your usual Swagger experience. So as a developer, you can actually uh, put some streaming uh, data directly into your app or onto your server um, as simply as possible. So it's a good, for, for those who plan to release a streaming API, I think it's a good uh, model to, uh, to look at for, for you to think about the interface you should provide for that as simple as possible and as close as possible from your other developer uh, or your REST developer portal. All right, this um, last one is, uh, it's, this is an example of uh, the way Salesforce consumes events. So who's heard of uh, Salesforce platform events? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's uh, pretty much like choreography, a good way to actually build uh, reactions. See the, the graphics, um, and we, we've worked with them, actually we're feeding them with NASDAQ data, and uh, on that basis you can actually create uh, uh, reactions based on what's going on in the market. And it's all uh, uh, drag and drop, very, uh, very simple. So it really makes it accessible to uh, lots of people. All right. And the last one is uh, an example in, uh, in uh, air traffic. So we, if we look at the air traffic section in, uh, in our gallery, uh, you can find, of course, Amadeus, uh, Sabre, and, and, and some, um, some airlines. Uh, and one of them is we managed to integrate through Kafka. So we're talking, we're distributing data through Kafka to Talend, and Talend Data Stream also has a, a studio to create reactions to events coming from uh, from Kafka. So you can feed Kafka with events from third parties and create reactions in the Talend Data Stream uh, on that basis. So just to say that it shows, I mean, we, we have here three software vendors that have created tools for developers to be able to manage uh, what's going to come from uh, streaming APIs and how they're going to react and actually publish uh, reactions to, the, to third parties. <coughs> and all this happened over the past year. So it's a, it's a massive movement right now. So it's time for questions, I think. OK, uh, one minute left. Um, any question? No? All right. So who has an event-driven API today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we, we'll do the test next year. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot.